Hey, what's up, fam? On today's episode of the Foresight Podcast, we're going to be talking with Jeffrey Thorne. He's a writer that's been worked on some of the biggest projects out, and he's had one of the hardest jobs in the world, which is making Tariq from Power a likable character. Is that even possible? Well, we're going to find out. Down, sir. Five, four, three, two. You do that very well, sir. You really do. <laughs> and you got on your Superman shirt. You look like a <laughs> Superman biker today. Wow. <laughs> Was that Lobo with the Superman shirt on? Yeah, well, he got, he got, my man's got the <laughs> Superman shirt on, got the long sleeves on. Now, now, granted, now, it is like almost two degrees outside <laughs> so you oh that's right you have yeah. real winter yes we, we get real this. winter <laughs> yeah we don't we laugh at real winter real winter is rain for us so. oh if only you knew <laughs> oh i i i, I what do you think i'm out here <laughs> i went back to new york last winter i was like oh yeah that's why i left yes real oh, winter <laughs> no you all can have all of that uh, let me introduce the show. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Foresight Podcast. I am your host, David Gordon, better known as DKG72. And uh, on this show, we speak with creators, artists, entrepreneurs, and we get into the the why and how they do the things that we do. And uh, I'm super excited today because uh, I've got a gentleman that I've, I met um Almost Jesus. 10 years ago. Jesus. Long time. Yeah. And uh, got to know him and, and got, to, got to see how he works. And I was, I was amazed. And, now, and then got to watch all the things that he was doing career-wise. And I was like, holy crap. Uh, I'm slacking. <laughs> What's that line? What's that movie? Uh, uh, Tollywood Shuffle. Who's got to eat? Yeah, who's got to eat? Who's got to eat, too? too? <laughs> you got the whole okay, cakes. Okay, okay, okay. Cake, okay. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Wait, no, Hollywood Shuffle. Not Hollywood okay. Shuffle, yes, Hollywood Shuffle. Yeah, that's it. So, without further ado, let me introduce my guest, uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Thorne. <laughs> Hello. Uh, now, before we get started, Jeff, just want to say that what's up to all the people that have uh, continued to rock with the podcast from the beginning or are just now getting on. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, all five of you. Um, thank you so much, guys. Wow. <laughs> We're small. Let's see if we can up that count. Yeah, you know, we're growing. We're, we're growing. We're growing right now. Um, so let's just get into it. Jeff, um, tell everybody kind of your superhero origin story, how how, <laughs> how this all got started. Okay. The short version is I started out as an actor, uh, got some success doing that. Uh, at some point during that career, I realized it wasn't for me. Um, there was some stuff at the time, like the world of movies and TV and all that is very different now than when I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I was doing pretty well. I mean, some people remember those days. Still get fan mail from time to time. Mm -hmm. But um, I realized I was not going to be getting the kind of parts. They weren't writing the kind of stuff that I wanted to do right. um, for, for brothers mm -hmm. back then. Now, like, you can't swing a cat without a black superhero or a black science fiction <laughs> person. Or, like freaking Heimdale wielding a magical sword or some nonsense. But exactly. back then, it was Uncle Phil or Cop Number 7 or Thug Number 3. And I was like, I'm not having this for the rest of my life. I'm going to go do something else. I know a couple um, of friends that have played Thug Number 3, so yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. You know, you can make a good living doing it. I just was like, I'm not going to be saying this over and over again for the next 10 years. <laughs> so um, I quit. Uh, mm -hmm. And it went really bad for a while. Everybody makes it sound, you know, you think I had all that Hollywood money, but I got ripped off by my accountant. I was broke for three years trying to reestablish myself as a writer. Oh, wow. It was pretty rough. Yeah, it was rough, yo. Rough. Rough. Yo. And, um, but, you know, uh, I kept working at it. I had a couple of breaks, a um, couple of lucky breaks, and um, I ended up writing short stories, Star Trek stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to use that in Hollywood to, uh, they would like, 
when I started selling short stories, they started taking me seriously because somebody else had paid me to write. Mm-hmm. Before that, nobody would look at me or talk to me. But now I sold these three short stories over here. And they're like, oh, you're real now. I'm like, I oh, was wow. real last week. <laughs> <laughs> like, but okay. And um, a really long story short, I ended up getting on this show called um, Law and Order Criminal Intent. Me mm-hmm. and a partner, we wrote a, um, she had a, a connect there. And so she's like, let's write this pilot together real quick. We can see if they'll, they'll buy the pilot from us. Okay. Um, and so we did that. And they didn't buy the pilot, but they put us on staff. Um, okay. This, of criminal intent. Like, we're not buying this show. We're not doing that. But uh, we like the way you did this. So if you guys want to be our junior writers this year, you know, come on board. And uh, I said, hell yes. She had another job that paid her more. Because when, you, uh, when you're a writer team, yeah. the company pays you as if you're just one person. Mm. So you split the fee. And that split fee for me was going to be a whole lot of money. But from her point of view, it was a pay cut. Right. So, and I was like, girl, you better take this job. I'm trying to get out of this house. <laughs> you, you know, I, know, I know you got kids and everything. You better take this damn job. Right. <laughs> so um, she made the right choice, obviously. <laughs> 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 Long story short, she yeah. made the right choice. She made the right choice. And so I did that. We got we basically got fired off that job. And another show that I've been trying to get on for two years at that point, Leverage, uh, my mm. agent was like, you should call them up. And I was like, they just told me they're not going to hire me for this year. And because I got another job, they don't want to hear from me. Right? Because you don't want to poach right. writers from one show to another. That's just not done. And he's like, my agent was like, well, you're not on that other show, so they're not poaching anything. Why don't you call them up? And I was like, because they took me out to lunch to tell me I'm not going to be on the show this year. Like, it was very nice, but I'm not going to be on the show this year. And he's like, Jeff, why are you arguing with me? You have a connect over there because they already like your writing. Mm-hmm. You should at least let them know you're free. You don't know. Right? And I'm like, shouldn't you do that? He's like, I'm not friends with them. I'm just your agent. You know them. You pitch stories to them. They, you, they gave you the number to call if you ever wanted. Mm-hmm. See what happens, right? And I was like, all right, that's fair. So I did. Um, and that's such a long story. That's like a whole podcast about that all worked out. <laughs> but at the end of the day, um, on a Friday, the last day of work on um, Criminal Intent, mm-hmm. um, on that Monday, I went to work on Leverage and stayed there for three seasons. Okay. So, um, and I just started trying to do everything at that point. I was like, uh, I don't know when I'm going to, I don't know how long this job is going to last. I don't know how long this career is going to last. Mm-hmm. I thought that other career was going to be everything and I was going to at least be sitting on money for the rest of my life and that didn't work out. Right. So let me let me basically do everything I can do right now. <laughs> so um, me and my boy put together a comic book. I started trying to do animation work. Mm-hmm. Like I was doing anything. Like I'll just say yes to anything. And, you know, 10, 10 years later, m- more than that now, um, it looks like I got this big fat resume, but really it was just, I'm trying to eat. Yeah. Like I was saying, yes, anybody offered me a gig writing, I took it. Like any job, any job, any pay amount. Yeah. Like I, anything. No, that's understandable. That's amazing too. Um, so when I met you, we you, we were just forming um, Lion Forge and you yep. had got the plum assignment of uh, rewriting. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it was the plum assignment. <laughs> it was fun. No, like it was fun, but it was wild. Was, uh, you, you, know got, you got Night Rider. I got Airwolf, and immediately started getting my head beat in. <laughs> Whoa, those fans are crazy. Man. Those fans are crazy. <laughs> I was like, this show's been off the air longer than your ass has been alive. What are you talking about? <laughs> Well, I'm an expert on Knife Rider. I'm like, well, you're not an expert on this Knight Rider. I told um, you, at least they let you get the first two books off before they turned up. <laughs> Dude, no, no, no. What? They were like, oh, you don't know this story. Uh. I didn't tell anybody. Some some dude, they announced, the company announced I was going to be writing Knight Rider, and they never heard of me. God, mm-hmm. only imagine. But my troubles with the internet have been long, okay? Because <laughs> I'm a comic book fan, so I talk a lot of smack about comics oh, like, oh as boy. a fan. <laughs> and, right, and then people will go find the stuff that I said and be like, wait, this fool is writing my book that I like? Oh, hell no. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so with Knight Rider, a couple of dudes found out 
that I was going to be writing it. They didn't know anything about me. Mm-hmm. And they said, so look, let me hook you up. I'm the expert on, um, I'm an expert I, on all things, Knight Rider. I know what you're um, talking about. <laughs> right. So what you need to do, see, is you need to call me and let me run through all your scripts. And then I'll, make, I'll tell you where you went wrong and you can fix it before it goes out and you embarrass yourself. And I was like, yeah, or, or, that's a plan. That's a plan. But here's what we're actually going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write this book and you can buy it or not. Exactly. That's what we're going to actually do. Exactly. So thanks for your input. But, and homeboy, he hounded me. He still hounded me. Like, I'm not, like, how long ago was that? That's this fool will 13. pop up on other shit, on other things and go, he burned me on Knight Rider. I'm like, I didn't burn anything. You, you were not involved. Yeah, you weren't catching the check, dog. Yeah. I, also, I told him, and I'm sure you might have had this problem with, not, with Airwolf. I said, the company did not ask me to write season eight of Knight Rider. They said, rebuild this. Start from zero. Do whatever you want within these lines bro i tried to explain and that and like, it just went <laughs> they did nope they don't want to hear it they were like <laughs> they don't want to hear i was it. like look man i put hawk on the on the lake state playing the cello what else y'all want they're like no nah. it yeah, was like a gi plane. oh my god all right how dare you rename the car it's like i didn't rename the car it's an origin story can you read the whole story right it's like you know we're trying to move this into they couldn't move out of 1980 and it it showed <laughs> like you don't know Knight Rider, and I was like, "Oh, I bet I do." <laughs> you, you know, that, man, they tell you that stuff. I'm like, they were telling me what I didn't know. I'm like, "Bro, I just watched the the trailer, and and I realized something. Airwolf is boring." <laughs> yeah, that, that shit don't work now. It, like it, you can't. It, no, it won't work now. It so, won't work now. It it was it was bad, but that's how I met you. <laughs> but but I will say this about, and I have a long ongoing. I love Line Forge. Um, our mutual friend, probably Brandon Easton, is who hooked me up with Lion Forge. Oh yes, like he he was like, you need to talk to these fools. They're about to start some big stuff, um, and I was like, oh, I don't know, but I trust you. And I went and had a meeting with these guys. And I will say this, um, and you can tell from their output, right? It's a black company because the guys who run it are black. The guys who were founded it are black, mm-hmm. but their output is not like. Um, you know, blackity black, 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 the black, black, black. Right. It's, it's like, it's, it, 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 it has some of that, obviously, because why wouldn't it? Right. But what I felt like, and it was one of the few times that I've ever been out for a job, that nobody was judging me except on my writing. Yes. Like, yes. It wasn't that, oh, we need a brother up in here. It was, it didn't matter at all. It was and, like, and the we crazy, just want to read it. And the crazy part about it, your story was incredible, because I'm... I'm there. I'm reading. I'm reading it before it even hits the the internet. Sure, so I'm, I'm sure. looking at. I'm like, shit. this fool's crazy. <laughs> shit, I gotta step my shit up. God, well, oh but they, shit, but, he turned, now see, but you oh. don't. You don't know the story they rejected though. Oh. Like that was like I pitched them like five different things, and they're like, "You must be high. We're not doing this." <laughs> Who, who, what? We said Knight Rider. What is this stuff? You got time travel and lizard aliens. And, like, we're not doing this. No, come up with something else. And I was like, you might want to be more specific, but when you say I can do anything. <laughs> right. Obviously, there's any anything is not on the table. Right. It's like, Jeff, there's a dragon in this story. <laughs> and I was like, you said anything. Hey, 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 why not? It's Knight Rider. Right. So, yeah, so what we ended up with I thought was kind of fun. I think it would still make a good kind of show. Uh, it would. basis for a show. Oh, it would. And I liked Airwolf. I liked, I liked that they took those properties. I was trying to talk them. I'm sure you were, too. Like, I thought there was going to end up being some big crossover event, and, like, they were all going to go together. And, like, that's part of why I built that organization, so that that could be, like, the bad guys for everybody. And you know, It would have been fun, but the problem is, is and it's not even, that, it was not even a company problem. Well, it is a company license. problem, but not that company. It's the licensing thing, and right. then they after, let you. Yeah. after a while, it gets so convoluted, and it, it 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 got to a point where even they were the one. Like I say, there were some changes that I didn't always agree with, but the one thing I did agree with after a while, it's just too much. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, these shows are not on the air. Nobody is watching these damn shows. Let us flex. And, and, What's wrong with you? And it's like every other week, because that's before they even had, you know, before, well, that's after Comcast had bought NBC Universal, before they even knew any. They did right. Some of these shows, they didn't even know they had until they looked through the vaults. Oh, I still hear that. I still am talking to people. It's not their fault, too. Yeah. Like, a lot of these catalogs are so big, so long. They can't. Right? They go back so far. Nobody can know all of it. 
And, so, and you're not going to have no no person that just moved into executive position, with, but was born in 1994, know all the all the things that came back came out before. Exactly. 1980. Exactly. It's, it's impossible. It's exactly exactly that. And like, uh, uh, frankly, a smart company would have a department just for that. Literally, like mm -hmm. we're going to hire some college kids like every summer. All you need to do is go through our catalog. What do you all think as young people would make a good show? That yep. would be the job. Oh, that would be like, a, that's a good move. Because they got thousands of properties going back to like 1930, some of it's these companies. Amazing. We would right? look at the list of stuff and just be like, Jesus. Man, I looked at, like, there are some properties I was like, I'm not really big now on taking other people's stuff. I want to, like, do my own stuff. Mm -hmm. But I went through, what was I going through? I went through, I think, the CBS back catalog because that's also Paramount Pictures. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wait, wait, because they own companies that nobody. Everybody remembers they don't even exist anymore like rko and some of these other old movie companies wow. they got bought up by the modern movie companies and, and right. these big conglomerates so there's like movies you were like oh i love that movie wait you guys own that <laughs> and they'd be like what we own that you know and i'm like yeah those, you own it yeah those, those you know? same conversations so, uh, and speaking of paramount yeah, star, yeah. star trek it seems you have <laughs> a, uh, it seems you have an interesting relationship with a uh, the Trek I, and, and me being a fan of both of both Star Wars and Star Trek Star Trek first Star okay. Wars second but yeah um, and I keep it separate separate but equal oh you get you better <laughs> you got to keep it separate but equal. separate but equal my ass you know Star Trek's the one Star Trek started all this nonsense <laughs> hey man I love I, I love I love the commercial <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, I am my daddy. What? What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just sit down. <laughs> oh, Patrick Stewart was great. So, with Star Trek, you said the short stories that you were writing were yeah. for Star Trek. How yeah. did how did that even come about? Because I know you well, you, you were actor and you were kind of transitioning to, okay. to writing. I wasn't doing very well in the writing thing. I tried to be a screenwriter. I couldn't get anybody mm -hmm. to pay any attention to me. Okay. Um, and my wife was like. Well, you also write, you know, books and, you know, you write short stories and stuff like that. Why don't you try that? And I was like, I don't even know how to get started on something like that. Like, I never even thought about that life. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So for a while, it was nothing. And then a guy at my comic book shop was talking about, this is going to sound hysterical to you, but Peter David, who used to, who got famous writing the Hulk, mm -hmm. was writing Star Trek books. And I yes. was in love with his Hulk run at the time. I was like, wait, what? Peter David, Peter David? Mm -hmm. He's like, dude, you need to read these books. They are crazy. They're just like what you would think Peter David would do with Star Trek. And I was like, but I remember those old Star Trek books, uh, except from this guy, James Bliss. Mm -hmm. I never really liked them. I always thought they were kind of weak. He's like, you need to check this stuff out. They're not doing it like that anymore. So I went and I grabbed some Peter David. We did this thing called The New Frontier, mm -hmm. which no one will ever make into a show because that was some crazy nonsense okay i mean i loved it but he was going off yeah like he's like <laughs> ain't nobody watching me i'm doing whatever the hell i want but um but at the next literally right next to that the, that book the new frontier was this book called strange new worlds mm -hmm. which was a anthology but it was a contest book basically mm. the idea was every year they put out the word send us some short stories if we like them uh, the ones that are the best will get the top, you know, gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal. But even the ones we don't love that much, they're mm -hmm. going to make up the rest of the book. And everybody who gets in these books gets paid. You get a real contract. It's oh, not wow. just a win. You get a straight up writing contract, which means residuals down the line. There's never any residual stone. That's just <laughs> but um, but it, at the time, it looked great to me. So... I tried out the first year, I didn't get in, but the editor wrote in the margin, they send you these form rejection letters, because mm -hmm. um, you know mostly you say no. So right. they like, I can't be writing all these individual letters right, right, right. Right, for thousands of people. So they send you a, a form letter, but in the margin it was like, almost, I want to see more stories from you next year. And I was like, oh, hell yes, let's okay. go. <laughs> so I sent him like one the first year, I sent him six the next year and I got in. Um, That's what's and up. I got in as a silver medalist. I didn't win oh, the top wow. spot, but I got a second place. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, and it was a really wild story. So some of the other Star Trek, the pro writers, some of them came out of that, mm -hmm. and they had read it. So I was. this was the beginning of Twitter, and I think AOL was still there, okay. was, was still around. And I hooked up with one of them, and 
uh, well, actually, one of the other fans was like, that was a good story, yo. You need to talk to Homeboy and see about getting you on the real job, you know, over on, on the regular side. Okay. I was like, I don't even, I don't know these people. I don't know how to approach any of these dudes. He's like, I'll tell you what, this guy's actually in this system. He came out of the same thing, the program you just came out of. If anybody knows it's going to be him, all you got to do is ask him. The worst he can do is say no. And I was like, you know, that's true. Right. So that guy's name is Dayton Ward. And mm-hmm. he was a three-peat first prize winner. And I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not rolling like that. But, and he had been writing books and books and books. And I was like, okay, well, he's good, I guess. So I hit him up. I said, what should I do? He's like, if you got into the top three, they're already talking about it. Oh, right. Oh, because wow. all of the editorial staff will see the top three books, the uh, top three winners, because those are the guys that they're going to start to ask way down the line. Mm. If you, you know, they might throw you a story even if you did nothing. Right. Right. And I was like, huh. So what should I do? Wait. He's like, hell no. You should hit up this editor. <laughs> and I was like, but I barely hit you up. I don't really know the editor. He's like, here's how I hit him up. You just tell him you want to write Star Trek stories. Here, remind him who you are. They're going to have you on a list because all the winners are on a list. Um, and just don't expect him to get back to you right away. You know, he's busy and you'll be low, low priority. But he'll get back to you because he's a good guy. And he was right. He did get back to me. And okay. um, we talked We talked for a bit. And I was like, well, I don't have anything to pitch you. He's like, good, because I'm not listening to damn pitches right now. I'm just trying to fill you out what kind of guy you are. I really liked your story, so I know how you think. Uh, and I was like, I don't think you do. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's cute you think that. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll keep you in mind. And then... A few months later, somebody dropped out of the of an anthology. I don't know what the circumstances were, mm-hmm. but somebody dropped out of this anthology that ended up being called "Prophecy and Change" about Deep Space Nine characters. Okay, he's like, "Look, somebody fell out. You interested in taking a shot, taking that slot?" And I was broke as hell, yo. Like broke. Like, where's my next money coming from? I know the feeling. And I was like, I've "How quickly do you turn these around once I turn the scripts in?" He's like, well, it's, a, it's the end of this current month, and I just paid rent for the next month. Um, do it quickly enough, you turn it around in three weeks. And I was like, boom, let's go. Right. So uh, I wrote him a story. based. You know, you write outlines, you pitch the thing, all that stuff. Went through mm-hmm. all of that. And then the night before I was supposed to turn it in, I panicked. No, the, the Friday before I was supposed to turn it in, I panicked. And I was like, this isn't good enough. This is some bullshit. I thought of some way better stuff while I was writing this. I should write that. So I stayed up all weekend and rewrote this long ass story from the ground up and turned that in. It had nothing to do with the outline that was approved. It had nothing to do with what we've been talking about. It had the same characters and that's it. Right? This is better. He'll love this. This is way better. And I wrote and I sent it to him and he's like, okay, I received it in, on a Monday. And on Tuesday, he wrote me back, Jeff, we need to talk. And I was like, uh oh, calls me up. And the first thing he says is, um, this is not what we discussed. I only have one question for you. Did you write this the night before you turned it in? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> right? And I was like, well, mm. yes, 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 sir. Yeah, yes, yeah. I did. Uh, he's like, please tell me you have another story that isn't this story. And I was like, yeah, I panicked. And I read, he's like, ah, la, 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 send me that other story, please. <laughs> so I did. And he's like, okay, I understand why you panicked. This is a better story. All right. It's way better than that craziness you sent me <laughs> that you wrote over the weekend, you idiot. What's wrong with you? And he's like, well, and I said, well, blah, 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 blah. And he said, let me tell you some information. The writer's never the best judge of their own work. Mm. Right. Right. You're always going to think either it's genius or there's something wrong with it that isn't wrong with it. It is not your job to tell you tell me whether I like your story. It's my job. You to send me the story and I tell you what needs fixing. So don't do this ever again. You're lucky it was me instead of some other editor because they would have just thought, oh, he spent all this time that we've been Turkin w- working together, and this is what he came up with. No, yeah. they would have just never talked to you again. But. I know you can write better than this, so I knew you probably had something in your back pocket that, you know, let me see that. And I was like, okay. And I haven't, I never looked back. Ever since then, I just write it, hand it in. Like, let the editor, let the boss, whoever the boss is, let them decide 
and then make fixes. There's always going to be something anyway. Yeah, even the best thing. yeah, you're right. So, so that that just turned into writing, like more short stories for them. Ultimately, I ended up writing a novel for them, which was very nice. Um, and that turned into another guy I met at a comic book shop. I'm always in comic book shop. Twitter and comic book shops. Twitter <laughs> and comic book shops are my career right now. But um, so I was woofing about something. I don't remember what. And I said something like, how come writers in Hollywood never help other writers? Like, <laughs> we, get, we get kicked all the time. Ain't nobody ever helping anybody, right? And the other guy, and the guy in the back said, I'm a writer. I help other writers. And I was like, look, I wasn't talking to you, man. Who are you? <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to you. Who the hell are you? He's like, well, I'm so-and-so. I made this little movie and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, that's good for you. But what the hell are you? Why are you in my set? <laughs> right? And he's like, well, I'm a, you know, I heard you were talking about Star Trek and your little rant over there and I'm you know and I was like oh okay so what and he's like well I'm Star Trek fan number one like I've read all the books I own every Star Trek book ever written oh boy and I was like oh but he was challenging like the way I'm saying it sounds like he was you know justifying Mm -hmm. whatever he was like I think you're full of shit ain't no way your crazy ass who's in here woofing about the Hulk every week is uh, a Star (laughs) Trek writer You, you must think we're all stupid I'm about to blow you up in front of these fools and I was like, oh, you have all of the Star Trek books? Then you'll have this book, this book, and this book with my name on them. Right? And he was like, oh, he's going to take the, he's gonna take this this far? Where mm-hmm. he thinks I'm going to go home, check my library. I know he's not in my library. <laughs> right? And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to clown this fool really hard. Right? Except he went home and found my name on those books. Oh, shit. Right? Oh, damn it. Right. So I like, damn it. Right. So <laughs> weeks later, I'm just in the shop and I'm coming out with my friend. I hear this guy yelling at me, Jeff Thorne. And I turn around and it's the same dude who I still don't know. Mm-hmm. Really. Right. I mean, I've seen him in there, but. Right. You, you don't know, know him. I didn't no. know his, right. I don't know him to be yelling my name out like that. But um, he uh, he's like, so I, I went to my library. You were in there. I was like, I told you I was going to be in it. Right. And he's like, I can't believe you wrote those stories. I was like, I told you I wrote those stories. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, no, I can't believe you wrote those stories. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how to take that, man. And he's like, well, you're in here every week arguing about the Scarlet Witch can do this. And <laughs> the X-Men shouldn't be like that. And, you know, Legion of Superheroes is the best thing ever. It's like, I, just, I was like, dude, that's two hours on a Wednesday every week. It's like if you met somebody at a bar and they were drunk. Mm. You think they're always drunk at a bar? What's wrong with you? You know, I'm grown. It's like, this, this right? my, I'm like, on my lunch break. <laughs> this is literally me on my lunch break. What are you talking about? He's like, well, what I'm talking about is um, I'm in with Brian Singer and a bunch of those guys. And based on your writing and what oh. I've heard you talking about in here, um, they're trying to take a run at making a new Star Trek series. Because at this time, there was no Star Trek series. Mm-hmm. Or Star Trek, yeah, Star Trek series. Uh, uh, all of them were done. Right. There was no enter- there was no Enterprise yet. Okay, so this is um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was I think there was no Enterprise. There was only yeah, Voyager was it, and it yeah. was almost done. Yeah, Voyager right? was at the end of that run. Okay, so everybody was sort of like kind of vie to get the franchise, mm-hmm. and it's like so. I was thinking maybe this guy's like, I think you might be the guy to design the show for them because I read your stuff and it seems like you really really know your shit. And I was like, well, I mean, I, I go back with Star Trek. Like, when I was a kid, I went to, like, the old creation conventions. Like, I mean, I love Star Trek. Of course. So, and he was like, all right, well, come to my office and we'll discuss. And basically, I'm the guy who ended up writing what they now call the Brian Singer pits. Like, I created this show for them because Brian was too busy. And the other two guys, Brian, um, Brian Singer, I forget the other guys' names, but they're all huge. Oh, uh, Brian Fuller, Brian Singer, and the other guy from uh, Usual Suspects. Um, with their other writer and usual oh, okay, suspects, okay. right? And they they were all too busy being big time Hollywood dudes. They just wanted to do it and didn't have the time. So they're like, uh, so I was like, you want me to do it? What's in it for me? And they're like, what do you want to be in it for you? Because we ain't paying you nothing. And I was like, like a lot of people in Hollywood have this weird attitude. Like it's your it's your thrill to work for us for nothing. Right. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what country you all are from. <laughs> Where I come from, people get paid for labor. I don't know what you're talking about. So you better offer me something. Right. Like otherwise, I'm not doing it. And they're like, all right. If the show goes, you're going to be staffed. You'll be on it. You know, all of that stuff. And I was like, at this point in my career, I'll take it. 
So I designed that show, Star Trek Federation. They mm-hmm. had Michael Okuda, who did all the designs for the old shows. He was the designer. Uh, uh, I said, do you guys have any um, anything you want in the show? Like, it's your show. Like, is there anything? They're like, nope. Just make it cool. Make it Star Trek. And I was okay. like, bet. All right, that was I was gonna do that anyway, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I basically went off and made up a whole bunch of crazy stuff, and that turned into the singer pitch. Um, wow! And then J.J. Abrams beat them. J.J. Abrams <laughs> beat them, and it all nothing happened. Uh, so well, lens um, flares and then lots free, of lens flares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I was one of those who was like, I felt that they did something really nice in the first Star Trek that he did, which was make sure everybody understood that this is an alternate reality, like. Yeah. They took pains to make sure that you understand I did not erase anything. This is not the same James T. Kirk. Different events occurred. So this is a like theoretically in a future world where we have really good CGI, these two Captain Kirks could have an adventure together because they're not the same guy. Exactly. Right? And I was like, that's all you needed to do. Now I can enjoy these movies for whatever the hell they are because no one's no one's taking a shit on all that came before. No, they're not. Right. In fact, he he did make that so clear. And I'm a I'm a that yeah. rare minority that actually like uh into darkness, you know, most people hate. Oh, it. what? Oh my god. Well, all right. I don't hate it. But they didn't need to have Khan be involved at all. All they need to do is not call that character Khan. Now, I kind of agree with that, but you know what Into Darkness really was for, for me? And this has always been my theory mm-hmm. about that movie. If you go mm-hmm. back to the first movie, Into Darkness was the test Kurt cheated on when he first met Spock. Sure. Sure. And that, sure. Was, that was literally, to me, that's what the movie really was all about. Making, showing, finally, finally bringing all, him all the no, way around to that. No, you're not wrong. I agree with all of that. My only problem was is that one... Look, y'all, you can keep trying to climb that mountain, but none of y'all are going to beat Wrath of Khan. <laughs> and none of y'all are going to beat Wrath of Khan. You can give it up. It's not going to happen. Like, oh, that, no. That's, no, a, no. A, that's like trying to go up Everest barefoot. You're never going to do it. And, but, and that's always been one of my things. I've never said that was as good as Wrath of Khan. Ever. Why would you? That, yeah, people put no, you yeah. in an insane asylum. Yeah. Like, that's some nonsense. <laughs> but the, the reason I felt like they made a mistake even trying to link it to that was... Mm-hmm. The whole point of Wrath of Khan was your past mistakes coming up to bite you on the ass. It was. Right? But the Into Darkness crew was too young. So Sp- Spock and Kirk were not like, we've been through the wars together. They were like, they kind of knew each other. They'd been working well for a while. But they hadn't even done the full five-year mission yet. No. Right? Whereas the Kirk and Spock in, in um, Wrath of Khan, they'd known them, each other for 30 years. So when Khan shows up, they'd be like, damn, this guy? Yeah, he, I thought they, we dealt with his ass. He's oh Jesus Christ! Oh, they don't know. We don't know. He oh my God! Like you could see the freak out because yeah. it made sense. But with Into Darkness, by calling him Khan, but still all he was was just another villain. Like he wasn't like he wasn't their fault. He was their boss's fault. Yes. So I was like, uh, uh-uh, this is not going to work. But if he had just not been called Khan, if it had just been like. Like everything else the same, just don't call it that. Then you won't have to worry about any of these criticisms and it'd just been a movie. And yeah. I think it would have been fine. I think it would have been fine. Yeah. Um, I, I, I and I liked it. I liked it. I liked introducing Homegirl, his love interest who's gonna be his 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 baby mama one day. At, at, at some <laughs> point. All of that. Yeah. I mean they had fun with it. And I really liked um the Beyond, where oh, people yeah. get mad at me about that. But I was like, they saved the day with hip hop, y'all. They you did. need to sit down right now. <laughs> like, and, that was... and, we, and you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and, and break for a minute because we got to okay. pay some bills. <laughs> but when okay. we get back, we're going to we're going to continue our little Star Trek talk because you know we're Star okay. Trek geeks. But more, even more importantly, we're going to get into some of the things that you're doing now. And, of course, we're going to get into your favorite playground of all playgrounds, Uh, Twitter. (laughs) Oh, yeah, let's go. They don't don't want none of this. They don't want none of this. Oh, boy. Uh, I just, you know what? I sit back and watch. But we're going to talk about that when we come back. (laughs) It's the Foresight Podcast. We'll be right back. Do you need to reimagine your love? Relax and set your mind free with the Black Love Chronicles coloring book from Foresight Publishing. 
Color in the spaces of love, lust, commitment, and embrace true passion with the Black Love Chronicles, available on Amazon. Get your copy and recolor your happiness today. Ready? <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Well, we're back on the Foresight Podcast. <laughs> and um, we were talking about Star Trek Into Darkness and all those good, uh, you know, Star Trek Beyond. And, and then it got, got me to thinking about another <laughs> another thing, you know, another dark place in the world. <laughs> oh, my God. You need to stop it. <laughs> A place... Um, that can only be described sometimes as the most Isley of the internet. <laughs> that <laughs> actually, I think that's actually fair. I think so yeah, too. That works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um, fair. It is a place of uh, uh, untold scum and villainy where mm-hmm. one man. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not just me. <laughs> one man. Well, well, a lot of people, like men and women, but but one man in particular, especially in our industry, he likes to. Post things of a, a provocative nature. I mean, is it though? I'm just innocently saying my thing. People most people recent, take offense. most recently, people that loved uh, of the poor, boring Hal Jordan had to come oh, whatever, to y'all. to Hal Jordan's defense, even though Hal Jordan is the most boring character on earth. <laughs> oh my god! And 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 they and they swooped in on uh, on on our guests, and, and, and what they didn't know is that our guest has a unlimited cachet of ammo. Of <laughs> I'm not the one for that. <laughs> I'm just not the one. <laughs> of quick retorts, smackdowns, <laughs> and everything else. So, Jeff, why is Twitter your favorite playground? You know what? It's not. It's COVID. I was talking to some boys about this. Wow. Um, even, 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 even without, with just the loss of Donald Trump as president, mm-hmm. my presence on Twitter has dropped by 30%. Right. Like, uh, I'm not as stressed out. I'm not needing to talk about, frankly, tense things as much. Mm-hmm. And also, in the, there's no real world for me to go out and do it in. I'm no hanging out. So uh, there's a lot of that. Plus, the same access that people have to come at me about stuff. Mm-hmm. If I'm mad at Donald Trump, well, until he got banned, ha-ha, <laughs> um, uh, until his ass got himself finally banned, mm-hmm. um, I would just, if I got something to say to him, I say it to him. Right. Now, I know he's not reading it, but maybe one day he happens to look at the screen and it's my tweet that popped up. And so that made me feel pretty good. Um, as for the rest of it, um, I think, like anything, it's a tool. Anything is what you make of it. Uh, and the way I was before I got hired to write at DC, talking to other fans about comics, saying what we all different people think. I have friends that love all that um, Zack Snyder nonsense. I hate it. <laughs> um, and sometimes it comes up and we have long conversations about it and I say what I think is wrong with it and they say why they love it. And sometimes it gets heated, but not really heated. And then, you know, and like I have this whole running gag where I, anytime somebody mentions Gambit in a positive way, I'm like, Gambit sucks, just what's wrong with you, you need to go to the hospital. Um, um, but I don't really care about Gambit. I just think it's, I chose Gambit at random. It could have been Nightcrawler, it could have been Dazzler. It's just like literally anytime anybody Man. says something nice about Gambit, I will show up and go, what's wrong with you? I think if, I think if it was Nightcrawler, they might have, they might have blown the gas. Yeah, people might come for me for Nightcrawler. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so with this Hal Jordan thing, um, <coughs> now, bear in mind, and you know this for sure, mm-hmm. what people like is bad takes on the internet. Like, they don't oh, really yeah. mostly ask you what, what is your favorite? They don't see, you don't see that a lot. No. What they say is, what's the thing you hate the most? Which, right. I don't get that, but occasionally I will answer the question. Um, so at DC, there are, somebody will, you can check the, like, Somebody came at me with this, so they compiled all of my tweets about it, which is somebody will say, what's your hot take about DC Comics that will make the other fans come at you with knives, right? (laughs) And I go, oh, well, Hal Jordan is boring as fuck. Uh, It should have been Jon Stewart in those movies ever since the, oh, I just lost one of my lights. Okay, Um, that's all right. It should have been Jon Stewart in the movies. It should have been Hal. Yeah, uh, that was a whole lot of money that um, Warner Brothers left on the table, mm-hmm. and uh, Hal is boring as hell to me. Made out of cardboard is what I like to say. Um, and so every time, and about once every four months, 
somebody will ask that question. And about once every four months, I'll see it and go, oh, Hal Jordan's made out of cardboard. He sucks. <laughs> right? This is Jeff as a fan. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that went on from, I guess, it's been going on for about six years. Mm -hmm. Right? Six years of once every four months. Right. Right. And every once in a while, someone who love when my friends who loves Hal will be like, is he, though? Come on, let's talk about it. And I'll be like, here's why he's made out of cardboard. Blah, 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 blah. Right. But it's me talking to my friends. Right. So it should be. It's public, but it's it's public. It's your public conversation with your friends in for fictional characters. Somebody shouldn't feel. A certain way Please, about. Don't get me started on Lobo. Oh. Please don't get me started on Lobo. Okay. Or, by the way, if they wanted, like, it'll never happen because I would never pitch a story for this character. But I hate Logan. I like X23. I like Laura. I think they should retire Logan's tired ass. I'm the best at what I do. I already know why. Just be X23. <laughs> to hell with freaking Logan. Bite me with Logan. Oh, okay? boy. The now, hot takes. What? Yes. <laughs> right. Now, that's just how I feel as a fan. Yeah. The difference is I'm never going to go to Marvel and pitch them a, a, a I hate Logan Wolverine story. story. Yeah. Never happen. Yeah. Right. And if Marvel said, we want to work with you, but the only thing you can work on is Wolverine, I'll be like, well, then you don't want to work with me because I ain't going to be writing any Wolverine stories. Right. Right. Um, and and that's, that's the same is true for many characters for different reasons. Um, so what happened with that was... DC, and it's a very long story, I don't know if we have time for it, but through a very long and weird sequence of events, I ended up being one of the many writers who was going to be doing some new stuff for DC, uh, many of whom were going to be doing stuff in the Green Lantern space. Mm -hmm. I pitched them a Jon Stewart story. They are like, oh, we like that. Go do that. You seem, to, you seem to really like and know the character. And I was like, cool. By the time the public heard about it, I was the only man left. So my Jon Stewart story became the Green Lantern. Right. Okay. But we don't tell that to the public because that's nobody's business. Right. right? Uh, and I certainly didn't say no. I could have said, oh, no, I don't want to write the whole book. I just want to do my little story over here. They were like, do you want the whole book or not? And I'm like, of well, course. you got to say yes. Yeah. Like, you have to say yes. So that's how that happened. But when it was announced, a couple of people never heard of me. Why would they? Right. So they went and checked me out. They went to Twitter. Where else would you Go. Most people are on Twitter. Certainly, most people who read comics are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So they found me. They uh, found did, the a, I guess, a search. Right? They went Jeff Thorne, comma, Green Lantern. Right? Mm -hmm. What has he ever said about Green Lantern? And I said, and this is the thing that really got them. I said the only interesting thing that Hal Jordan had ever done in his entire career since 1950, whatever, since he showed up, was turn into parallax and kill all the Green Lanterns. And they were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> and I was like, well, you can yell all you want, but it's still going to be true when you're done yelling. <laughs> Hold on, man. And here's the funny part about it. What's the most iconic cover for Green Lantern? It's the five, It's the 20 rings on the Damn right. Right? So whatever with that. the most iconic cover. But this is fan conversation. This is the yes, kind of stuff yes. you have when you yell at your comic book shop. Somebody's going to tell you, no, man, it's the F-sharp bell is the greatest Green Lantern. Like, well, all this stuff. Right? Well, it, it, just listening to you, it was that fan conversation that ended up getting you, the, helping you end up with, with writing well, the pitch. Nah. Well, we, helping you meet the guy that you would end up working with to write well, okay. the singer let's, pitch. Let's, let's, let's not get it too twisted. Um, the Green Lantern thing and the Vixen thing are different. Twitter created the Vixen comic that is coming oh, out. Oh, no, 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 no. I was saying okay. it's that fan but conversation in, like, when you're having the fan conversation in the, com in the, co the well, comic the book Well, the way, yeah, I mean, we love comics. So yeah. geeks like us love comics. So I'm going to be talking about comics. I'm still talking about comics. The only comics long. I'm not talking about are the ones I'm actually writing because that's not fair. Yeah. Right. That makes so sense. I won't be talking about Green Lantern anymore now that I'm green, writing Green Lantern until I'm done writing Green Lantern. And then I can go back to talking about Green Lantern like a normal person. But I can't tips. do it. Right. Um, <laughs> depends on what you ask me, to be honest with you. More okay. because I don't want to spoil the story. No. Nah, but yeah, okay. the, the bottom line was some guy compiled all of these one line, two line, and one conversation tweets. That's amazing. Um, and ran over to Bleeding Cool with it. And Bleeding Cool did to me what they did to, to, uh, to Dwayne McDuffie back in the day on Justice League when he was having some trouble with uh, Dan DiDio on that. They ran it together like it was some crazy rant. Mm -hmm. And then all these people started coming at me, and I was like, I don't know what you expect me to say. 
am I supposed to not say? It's not like I ran and hid all my, like, why didn't you erase all of your tweets? I'm like, why would I do that? I still believe everything it's I said. It's not that serious. It doesn't even matter. Even if it was that serious, I said it. So like, if I had erased it, you could still find them. Nothing is ever erased on the internet unless you destroy the original server. Nothing is erased. Right. So if you really wanted to find it, you would have found out not only that I wrote them, but that I then cravenly went and erased them because I got this job and I didn't want anyone to find out. <laughs> I don't care whether you know what I said. Everything I said, I meant. The thing I said to them, all the people who were coming at me was, uh, I'm a professional writer. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're used to dealing with. I don't know what these other comic book writers have been telling you or how they interact with you. But me, I do this for a real freaking living. So I can think one thing as a fan. And then if DC said, well, look, we know you don't like Hal, but he's got to show up in the book. There wouldn't even be any conversation about that. Right. Like if Hal shows up in the book, it's going to be Hal freaking Jordan. And you're going to recognize him as Hal Jordan. I'm not going to make him the mort. I'm not going to be having people <laughs> kicking him or he's going to be responsible for the freaking first crisis or like, right. I, I'm not here to tear down your idol. I just don't care about your idol. Right. And I didn't pitch a story about your idol and I'm not telling a story about your damn idol. I'm telling the story about Jon Stewart because right. that's what I pitched and that's what they liked and that's what they bought. Hal will occasionally pop in here and there, as will other Green Lanterns. But if you're thinking I'm swiveling to put the spotlight on him, you're going to be waiting a while because it ain't going to happen on my watch. And that was never the promise I made. Like, I never promised you any of that. So you can't get mad when I don't deliver it because I'm not trying to deliver that. So that's still ongoing. Um, There's some people, like I went on a couple of podcasts. There's a whole lot of people saying... Remember, I live on CBR. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm still there. I've been there. I was on CBR before they dumped the old servers and purged everything. <laughs> Came back, got my same original name so everybody remember it was still this guy. And I've been on CBR since there's been a CBR, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to the Hal Jordan, We Love Hal Jordan section, and I said, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to write like a pro. I'm going to write the story I came to write. All the stuff you guys are mad about, you can be mad about it if you want to, but the book's going to come out in April and you're going to see you shouldn't have been mad. Unless you just can't stand the story that isn't about Hal Jordan. In which case, yeah, you're going to be mad because this story is not about Hal Jordan. And it's never going to be about Hal Jordan. And I never promised you it was going to be about Hal Jordan. So you can be mad about that, but it had to do with any of the stuff you're mad about. Right? That's just you don't like any lantern that isn't Hal Jordan. Exactly. Okay, fair enough. But I don't take jobs so I can smack some fictional character. Like, I don't know who would do that. Maybe there's somebody like that. I think but, the fans yeah. just can think that. or they, they Because maybe a guy comes in with a different take on their favorite character, and they say, well, they're doing it on purpose. And they're like, no, that's, I don't, I, 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 I just can't see it. I don't see it. Like, I just don't see it's, it. Look, you, everybody loves who they love, I guess. I have more than 30,000, less than 50,000 comic books. I love comic books. I've always loved comics. I'm always going to love comics. But like every comic book fan, I have my favorites and I have people I don't care about. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have any characters that I straight up hate, like truly hate. I don't like what was done with with, um, Hal Jordan overall. I think the reasoning behind it was flawed. And I think a lot of bad business decisions were made. And I think he's a throwback kind of character and that's not a kind of character I like. I find those characters boring. Mm Mm-hmm. I think, and I've said this before, he's basically square jawed hero number five. The, name me one thing Hal Jordan can say that you go, oh, only Hal Jordan can say that. And, it, no, and that's like nothing. the Flash is running joke with him that, that literally is that. <laughs> yeah, like it's actually they've made it part of his thing. And by the way, right now Grant Morrison's writing a great Hal Jordan story, right? That Hal, that the Green Lantern thing that he's doing with mm-hmm. often in, in the Morrison verse, like, that's a Grant Morrison is a genius story, but even that story doesn't make me go, oh man, that makes me think of some great Hal Jordan stories. So if I'm not inspired by the character, you don't want me writing that character. You don't have it's a voice be for it. Boring. Yeah, it's just going to be boring, yeah. and I'm not interested in boring you, right? So when he shows up, he'll be a nice flavor, but he's just not going to be the main course of this meal, which and, is a good thing. Which is a good which thing. I think is fine. Yeah. You know, it was it was. When after Parallax, Kyle was the Green Lantern for 10 years. Yeah. It's been 
just about that or more that Hal was the Green Lantern. Now, there are plenty of people out there who are like, why isn't it Jessica's turn? And I'm like, uh, why isn't it Jessica's turn? I just didn't have any stories about Jessica. At the time, I got some cool-ass stories about Jessica now. So, like, you guys, they think they know what they're going to get because all they've gotten is what they've got. So, here's a spoiler, sort of. Okay. Um, everything that you've ever seen in the Green Lantern stories up until me taking over has been internal stuff between the Green Lanterns. Stuff that they fight other Green Lanterns about mm -hmm. or they fight the other different Lantern Corps about. Something either the Guardians did wrong or some threat that is kind of created by them in some way or, or it's Sinestro and his guys versus everybody's a Lantern. Right. I'm not doing any of that. I'm not doing any of that. Oh. I'm not doing any of that emotional spectrum stuff. I am not playing with that yeah, at that's all. Like the last, what, 10 years of story is really the... Yeah, it, enjoy your collection. I won't be dealing with any of that. <laughs> Okay. No, that's a good it'll, thing. It'll get mentioned. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's part of it. Obviously, you can't throw these things away. Right. But if you think that's meant to be the focus, you're not going to enjoy my run. I'm not saying everyone's going to like it. I'm saying the things you think you're not going to like about it aren't going to be the things. Right? And, I, and, and I like that you always, you always are trying to take a, a fresh approach to whatever project it, it, that you're yeah, on. Yeah, why not? Um, is that kind of like the thing, the process that you're going through with the, the, the Justice League, the Future State stuff? Um, the Future State thing was weird. A lot of people thought DC was doing this 5G thing at one point. Mm -hmm. um, and that was under Dan DiDio. And I certainly was asked to come in while that was happening, the pitch. Mm -hmm. But, and he showed me what it was, and I've talked about this. I'm not going to talk about it here because it takes too much time. But that was some crazy, amazing stuff that they were planning on doing. I just thought they were rolling it out too fast. Right. Uh, I thought, like, they were doing a whole line wide revamp that was insane and good. And I was just like, it might be too fast. It might be a shock to the system. Um, and obviously the bosses agreed that that was some craziness. We're not doing it that fast, bye. <laughs> but, um, but after that, I hadn't written anything. I'd written like a one page sort of, or half a page sort of proposal for this little John Stewart story. Mm -hmm. That's it. So when the new guys or the remaining guys came in and said, we still want to do some version of this, there was no 5G in existence anymore it was done all long gone oh okay. i was like oh really still and they're like yeah and i was like okay well in this new world that you guys have what would you guys want because dan had made some made me make some changes already to fit this other thing it's like no no all that's gone we'll we'll, we'll talk so we did um this is future state is at least on my side i don't know all the other writers i don't know what was made and what wasn't, what was sitting on the shelf, what wasn't. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is my Green Lantern stuff did not exist before Future State. Okay. Uh, my Green Lantern and Future State did not exist before they came up with Future State. They came and said, we're going to do this Future State thing. And I was like, what the hell is Future State? I'm trying to work on these out plot outlines. What y'all talking about? <laughs> right? And they were like, um, well, we want to flash forward however many years mm -hmm. into the future of the various and, superheroes. Right. And we want you to do one. And I was like, um, did you all read this outline? Right? Mm. And they were like, yes. And I was like, so you know what I'm planning to do to these fools, right? And they're like, yeah, Jeff. And I'm like, you're awfully eager, but don't you understand if I push it past like six months from now, like it's going to be unrecognizable as a, G as a Green Lantern book because so much crazy shit will have happened that the audience won't know about. And they're like, yeah. And I was like... <laughs> Uh, okay, so I chose a moment, which mm -hmm. is a crux moment, um, in this larger story, and said, "All right, let's drop them in." There's characters in it that no one's ever met. They have relationships that are long, obviously, but that right. you haven't seen them develop. And Nort gets turned into a big freaking mutant Hulk hound thing. Oh wow! Like how'd that happen? Right? Like I did a whole bunch, and I made Salak, who's basically the librarian of the freaking. <laughs> Uh, like he's a four gun toting dead eye kill you as soon as look at you dude and the look on your face is exactly the look I want because you're thinking what happened to like, him how did this happen sweet little goofy ass Nort is like a freaking werewolf and, and Salak's out there shooting people in the face with four guns what's going on right and that's the questions you should be asking because how did our normal Green Lanterns get from here 
to way over here where we made them in future state. Mm -hmm. um, some of the criticism has been, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, your ass ain't supposed to know what's going on. That's the whole point. It's One. 35 years in the future. What's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, uh, division is too long. Or, or they're, they're taking too long to get to the point. It's, have you ever seen a mystery in your life? <laughs> it's three, Seriously, 30 like, minute it's episodes. A story. <laughs> you know what I hate? I've always hated this, even before I was a writer. I hate that person who's loving, they clearly are loving something. And mm. They're like, what happens next? And I'm like, are you crazy? Just watch the damn movie. It's sitting right in front of you. Why are you talking to me? Watch the fucking movie. Right? What's going so, on? It's like, you, right. you see the and same so, thing I am. Yeah, so what I think happened was, two things happened at the same time. One, people don't remember this. And I, this is the first time I've said this, but I'm surprised no one's brought this up. Back in the day, Image Comics did this. Wildstorm Comics already did this. They were running their books, and they said, you know what, next month, we're jumping, I forget what the number was, but we're going to jump to Wildstorm 57. I remember like, that. You're reading this book, and it's book nine right now. We're going to jump your asses up to number 57. And when you get when we get to that number, we're not going to publish it that month because you already have it. It will be this. Right. Right. And all of us fans were like, what the hell? And you picked up those books and people were already dead. Some guy had lost an arm. You know, people were married that didn't even know each other. Like it was crazy, but it was awesome. Right. And all of us were like, whoa. But there was no Internet. There was no way for us to compare our misgivings and go. Oh, what are these fools about to do? This is going to suck. This is going to suck. You have what are to they come gonna, back gonna, next month. Right. You're going to have to come back and find out. So with Future State, yeah, there's a bunch of weirdness going on. And they've made a, DC has made a bunch of announcements about who's going to be in the book. And people, I'm watching them now. I didn't used to pay attention to any of this. Now I'm watching them all talk about it. And I'm like, boy, you guys just don't have any trust at all in these comic book people. You have no idea what I'm about to bring you. I promise you, because all these guesses, not even close, <laughs> right? So but isn't that the fun like, part? Knowing I think so. It being because you're the puppet master, you know where this is going. Yeah. So isn't it fun to see the the, the crazy theories that are on Twitter? I and would be. I would. I, there's a difference of levels, right? Like mm -hmm. some people are like, "Oh, he's going to do this, or he's going to do that." And I'm like, Haha, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but that's cute. But no. Um, but some people are like. I mean, they're just, it's like they, I feel like they must have trouble in their real lives. Like, mm. and the only place that it can come out is, the only place they can flex about it is in the comic book realm. Because some of the awful things that have been said about me, I don't really care personally, but I'm just like, really? You getting that hype? Negatively hype about some stuff that one hasn't happened, you don't know anything about. Like, even DC's only put out two or three sentences here and there. And mm -hmm. you're assuming so much. And a lot of it's based on the fact that I'm black. Like, yeah. you see my skin color and you go, oh, he's going to do this. And I'm like, boy, you better go check my catalog. Sometimes Seriously. I have to check out of your comments, um, Jeff. I'm, I, I've had a couple. No, no, I can't say that because I, I might start something. <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 don't. But see, I'm you know I, in a weird just... way. I'm above that. Like, I'm looking at it from a distance. Like a teacher would look at teenagers fighting about some nonsense. I'm like, guys, who has hurt you in this way? Have right. comic books really let you down so much that everything you think right now is they're about to hurt me again? Because I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here to tell some awesome stories. That's what I'm trying to do. Now, you might not agree that they're awesome. Like, you may read them and go, "What is this fool thinking about?" Galactus is from Marvel Comics. How could Galactus be in this comic? <laughs> right? How did they get the rights to use Galactus in this comic book? Yes, oh, right. I see. He spelled it with he spelled it with a K. Don't. So it's DC's Galactus. Right. <laughs> right. But it's not like that hasn't happened before. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know what other comic book writers have done. I don't know what other comic book creators in general have done. I am not out to hurt anyone's favorite character. I don't come into comics to do that. It is way too much work and way too little money for me to be coming here to be messing with people like that and wasting time. Now, that's not a guarantee that you're going to be happy with my work. You might not be, but that's the deal we make as creators. Some it of is. the people we put out work in front of them are not going to like it. Okay, that's your right. You paid your money, you get to have an opinion. 
Absolutely. And I'm not going to hold that opinion against you. No. I'm, I'm not mad at you if you don't like my work. You're allowed to. Because I'm a fan, too, as we've just seen. There's yeah. bunches of stories I don't freaking like. Okay? Even from writers whose work I love or artists whose work I love. Like, I love Alan Moore, but that Lost Girls nonsense? No. Uh-uh. Sorry, Alan. You can take that home with There's you. There's a couple of Alan you Moore know? stories I'm like, uh, I'm not, I don't he... see where the destination is going here, bro. What uh, were you smoking, buddy? And then uh, there's smoking? a couple others I'll be like, that was it! Exactly. <laughs> and I would say, pound for pound, he's one of the, he's in the top two, two or three best comic book writers ever to come into the game. Definitely. And still, with that, there's stuff he's written. I'm like, Mm-mm, nope, sorry, pass. Hard pass. Go mm-hmm. away. Right? That's me as a fan. So, and he also must understand that's the nature of the game. Yeah. Not everybody's going to like everything. All you can give them is your best effort. So I, it, it, it worries me and makes me sad that so many people are ready for trouble. Just ready for trouble. Like, looking for it, waiting for it, wanting to have that fight. And I'm like, I mean, if it was important, we could have that fight. You really don't want any of this. But if you really want to make it like that, you're not going to win this fight. I don't know why we're having a big ass fight about mutants right now, but okay. <laughs> okay. But you're not you're not going to win. But you know, I, I got five minutes to smack you around if you want. But why? It's it's like uh, yeah. why? I don't know. So the point is this: it's going to be. There's some things that they've announced. Obviously, mm-hmm. the power battery is something's going to happen to the power battery. Um. And I have said multiple times, well, if your ass happened to be in deep space when this thing happens, your ass is dead. Wow. That's not okay. good. Now, you could be on a planet and be lucky and you just get a little, oh, shit, my ring, something went wrong with my ring. But if you're flying between, you know, Vega and Aldebaran 2 and you're in the middle of deep space, if your species can't live in deep space, <laughs> your ass is dead, yeah. straight up dead, and you ain't coming back. Okay, at least not while I'm writing a book, right? I've told everybody this. I'll tell you this so everybody watching this will get the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I kill you with a magical blast or you get sucked into a portal and you you know they tell you everyone who goes in there is dead, maybe not. Yeah. But if somebody shoots you in the face or stabs you in the throat Mm -hmm. or you get chopped in half or a boulder drops on you, you can rest assured your ass is dead. (laughs) Hey man. Okay. Okay. Um, Stakes. So yeah, right. If death doesn't mean anything, then why why have the adventure? Yeah. Right. From my point of view. Yeah. So there's that. Um, yes, the Teen Lantern is going to be in it, but I promise you, no matter what you see in these press releases, it ain't going to be the way you think it's going to be. Oh, okay. I liked it already. Uh, this book is not about the Teen Lantern, just like it's not about Hal Jordan. This book is not about the Teen freaking Lantern. Uh, she's in it. She's gonna have some fun stuff to do. No. Right. Um, uh, the far sector, Joe Mullane, um, she's in it. They've announced that. But again, <laughs> nah. man, I'm saying, what do I look like? You think I'm going to do these boring ass ideas you're mad about? I'm not doing that. I'm going to do some other stuff. You might not like it, but it's going to be this boring crap you all are talking about. <laughs> I'm going to be doing some interesting shit. Um, the other thing is, there's going to be a whole lot of new characters you've never met before. Um, I'm purposely, not because I'm going to want to own them or anything. I don't care about that. Right. Um, but this is an outwardly looking Green Lantern book. It is not an inwardly looking Green Lantern book. So it is not about all this color spectrum stuff that you've been dealing with for 10 years or whatever. That's all good. Not all. Some of that stuff I like. Yeah. Not all of it. Maybe not even most of it. But some of it I like. But I'm not. that's already been told. I'm not going to tell you the same damn story. I'm going to tell you a new story. Exactly. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you won't. But it's not going to be any of the stuff they're worried about. They honestly seem to think that I'm coming in to beat up the white people. And I'm like, <laughs> do you not know any black people? Is it is it really like that for you? Because they, that's no, just they not, don't know any black people, so they don't they don't know. I, I'm just like, man, it's tiresome. Uh, it doesn't make me sad. Doesn't make me angry. I'm just like. I can see why people would think this was not worth the headache. If I didn't love comic books, I'd be like, yo, you know what my day job is, right? I'm about to like, say, um, <laughs> you, you know, you're getting a star, you know, you're getting a stars check right now. <laughs> I mean, like my fallback job from this is not that hard to do. Like I, I could turn my back on this. Well, we're talk- I don't want to because I just, we're going to talk about comics. another, we're going to talk about another project that you work on because, okay. Um, because 
because you got a rabid fan base with Green Lantern. But then <laughs> apparently, uh, then you get this other <laughs> rabbit fan base with 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 power. Sure, and that's a whole different beast. Those people are crazy. I don't even know what's going on with that. Like, I, I, I that coming on that show is I, I'm not on power. I'm a ghost. I, I, well, well, that's power, what it's, yeah, that's what the, the spin off. Yeah, it's the spin off. A ghost. I, I didn't know if it was power, yeah. ghost, or go or just ghost. Uh, they call it well, okay. They call it power. Uh-huh. Book two. Ghost. I'm and like, see, that's just the one. call it ghost. Right. Just call it ghost. <laughs> Whatever. Dude, so, that show is, those people are crazy. Like, those fans are, I mean, I never experienced anything like that. Like, that show, I, mean, I was, because <laughs> when, cause when, they, when I, when I, because I got there, I was like, oh, oh, Jeff's going to be on the show. Oh, my God. I already know he's going <laughs> to. And then I thought, hold up. Does Jeff know how insane power was before yes, he got to the spin I was like. Yes, yes. What, okay, let me put it to you like this. I had this very nice meeting with Courtney Kemp. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love Courtney. She is awesome. She is wonderful. Um, and uh, I was just meeting her. I didn't know. We geeked out about Avengers Endgame for about a half hour. That was the meeting. Okay. <laughs> like, um, and like at some point in the meeting, she's like, Okay, her partners were there watching this, by the way. She had two partners. And they were like, um, are you both done with Comic-Con? Because we're trying to do business here. <laughs> uh, and they're like, oh, yeah. So, and this was before the show came about. So mm-hmm. she was like, look, we're about to do a spinoff of Power. And I was like, wait. Yeah, but she's like, Power's ending. And I was like, excuse me? Why would you? How about uh, there's a lot of people... Uh, I mean, okay, live your life, girl. <laughs> Whatever. She's like, no, no, we got it. And she said, but here's what she said. She said it's going to be about Tariq. And I was like, um, <laughs> have you met Tariq? Right? Because people are trying to kill him in real life. I like, feel so sorry him. for dude. Like Poor when Michael. he told Poor the, when he told the, when he told the, <laughs> the, the elevator story. And the dude, he didn't even refer to him by his real name. He kept talking no. to him like Tariq. Right. He's, he's like they, Tariq. He's like. Poor Michael. This kid is great. He's a lovely actor. Really nice guy. Wow. Happy to be wherever he is. Right. And I was like, the fans hate Tariq. You yes. could probably make a show about a manhole cover and they would be more happy about that. Are you crazy? She's like, I have a plan. And I was like. Okay, girl, you do, you do you. She's like, and I would like you to come um, be my number two on it. And I was like, excuse me? I'm not trying to catch a bullet over this shit. <laughs> like, it must be crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. She's like, no, no, it's going to be fine. And we had a very young staff. Mm-hmm. Um, they introduced me to some shit that I'd never heard of, like the shade room. I oh, yes, like, the shade room. I was like, wow, people are out of their <laughs> damn mind. Right, a whole bunch of rappers I never, I never messed with. I had to mess with to get caught up. Mm-hmm. Um, I discovered the fabulous Megan Thee Stallion prior to um, this current crazy she's got going. But like, what I feel about Megan is that the business is not serving her the way it should. Because even though she's rich and she's famous and she's doing all that, they're making her. They only want to hear from her the sort of I like to have sex raps. Mm-hmm. Right, basically, I'm great in the bed. You, you want to get with me because I'll, I'll blow your brains out, all that. Right. But I heard her do some freaking freestyle bars on one of she these did, shows. She's dope. That girl's the truth. And, and she's an anime sh- fan. She's an anime nerd. But it's a shame because she understands what the business is. Cardi B said some stuff like this, too. It's like, yes. I can rap about anything, but what y'all pay for is this. And I'm like, that seems unfair for the ladies because... That's two rappers who are really like deep, deep gold ass rappers. Yeah. And you're only asking them to do this one thing and they're happy to give it to you because it makes them rich. But y'all are missing out because Megan is the damn truth. I yeah. could not believe that shit. I was like, wait, yeah. this is what you do off the top? What is this bullshit? Literally, I was like, I mean, you're fine and everything, but that's some bullshit compared to this. That bullshit over there is the check. <laughs> No joke. And the other That's stuff exactly is, what the answer is. And the other stuff is what I the, the stuff she loves. Cause she grew Man. up in a hip hop household. Her mom used to be a rapper. And she okay, grew up she grew up under like UGK and all those all those all those legendary acts. So she's got that background. It's just Skills, baby. Yeah. Straight up. 
like yeah. for real though. Yeah. And so they hooked me up with a lot of that kind of stuff. And partly the intent of Ghost was we're going to turn that corner for Tariq. And I was like, I am I'm down for this. That is a journey I'm willing to take because I can't see how that's going to happen. I'm now I didn't realize how much hatred was out there until I was on the show. And the show was in hiatus. It wasn't even running. It was in reruns. And people were still hating on Tariq. They would find reasons to bring it up. (laughs) My timeline would just blow up every episode of Ghost. And I would just laugh and be like, oh, Jeff, you just thinking this. You just... Because the timeline is going on. And then Green Lantern is going on at the same time. And I'm like... Oh, this you fool. just got what everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, I, I feel like, you know me. I'm, this is the same. I'm always the same. Yeah. Right? This is, there's no, this is it. Yeah. Right? And what happens on the internet a lot is people get to, they get in their feelings about all kinds of nonsense. And it feels safe and they do whatever and they say whatever. And they don't think there's going to be any repercussions. And I've watched mostly ladies they go after a lot in this regard. Female creators get a lot of static. People coming at them because they did something yep. they didn't like. And they make threats and they do all that, that stuff at them. Guys don't get it as much, but they get it too. And what happens is a lot of the creators, they go into one or two modes. One is, <gasps> right? And they just, I'm out! Right. They cut all their, they cut their social media and they run away because people are like, I know where you live. This is what we're going to do to you and your daughter. All kinds of shit like that. And then the other guys, because they're not as even, they think they're tough or whatever. They're like, bring it, fools! I will insult you really efficiently on the internet, you know. Right. And I'm like, that's not going to work because there's like ten thousand of them and it's just one of you. Right. Me, I'm I'm an internet native. I grew up on this shit. I've been on the internet since like 1987. So. Like when I was whatever age that is, pre-high school, whatever that is, before y'all knew, before there was an AOL, I was on the internet, right? I've been having these fights for years, and I know who's real and I know who's bullshit, and most people are bullshit. Right. So what I don't get is how much energy they can put into some of this stuff. Like the amount of energy that you have being mad about the color of so-and-so's costume or whether Power Girl's tits are big enough or small enough, you know, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like, you're willing to come to blows. You're willing to threaten people's life and livelihoods over stuff like that. And I'm like, there's a real world going on out there. Literally, like, there's going to be a million dead Americans if we don't get our shit together by this time next year. A million of us will have died of this shit. Yeah. Okay. And and, And and you're on the internet mad about who's right in Green Lantern and maybe the direction something you don't like. Like, it's like getting mad that Superman died. Ba- uh, Doomsday breaks Superman, kills Superman. And I'm leaning forward like, are you all stupid? Really? DC just killed Superman. Really? You do know he's going to stay dead brain. forever. Right. That's it. No more Superman. Really? Are you, are you high? What is wrong with you? You know what this is. It's a story. We were taking Just bets on how long they want to wait to take, bring him back. Straight, right? <laughs> and, and to their credit, they took a minute they to took, bring him back. They took a minute, yeah. They waited. They right. made, I they was like, oh, they, they stretched it out. They stretched that out. They're like, oh, we know what y'all doing. Mm-hmm. Guess what? <laughs> like, to the point where even I was like, oh, maybe they did kill him. I, did I, kill him. I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I was like, all right, because this right. one past the, state, the statute of limitations right here. They, they're they they're right. going with like, it. They, they, they let that ride. And I was like, okay, that was a ballsy move. But the point is, it's comic books. Yeah. So Batman's going to be Batman. It's going to be Bruce Wayne. I don't care what happens with the next Batman. There will always be a Bruce Wayne Batman comic. Yep. So you can get mad about it up to a point. But after that point, I feel like you have something in your real life that needs addressing. Yeah. Right? And Tariq is just a character. He's not that, that is young man. That's an actor man. playing a part. He's an he actor is playing not, a part. He has a stunt double. He wears, <laughs> when people get shot, there are these things called squibs. They're little blood packs that go, Pfft. there's no bullets. They don't even have bullets anymore. We CGI the bullets in. Yeah, the, right? the, the muzzle okay. flashes are CGI Guns now. don't even fire. Guns don't even fire. All of that's a, a magic, movie magic. But people were ready to hate this kid on site. But now, after seasons, one season of Ghost, they're on Team Tariq. That's I feel like, and now you've turned Mary J. Blige into the the the, the greatest monster on, 
I haven't seen anybody what? this scary since Omar from The Wire. <laughs> what? Mary what? J. Blige, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeff Thorne has turned Mary J. Blige into the scariest gangster in the world. <laughs> I take no responsibility. That is Courtney. Courtney is a damn genius. Courtney is a freaking genius. But I will say this about all that. Let me explain to you. Mary J. Blige and Method Man. Yeah. In the same show. And in my case, it was a couple of times on the same day. Um, and I'm supposed to be a producer. I'm supposed to be an executive producer on this show with Mary J. Blige and Method there. And I'm just like... All right, when is an appropriate time for me to just yell out Wu-Tang for life? Because, <laughs> like, if I do it at the wrong time, I might get fired. Uh, Cliff is going to not respect me anymore. <laughs> you know what right? you do? You just go get, you just, you find the, sh- you just find the shirt and just one day just walk through the whole the set. Dude, they don't know how close they came. <laughs> they have no idea. I'm like, oh, my God. And Mary, I mean... I, I, I've been working a long time. I, I guess I've been around some stars here and there, but I've never been around anyone that I kind of grew up with mm-hmm. and who was part of my childhood and my adolescence and my young adulthood in that same way. I don't know that I ever have really worked with anybody like that before. And it was difficult. I was expecting all kinds of trouble, like what kind of star attitude are these people going to have? I worked with big stars before, and that can be a problem sometimes because mm-hmm. um, they're used to a certain kind of life. Right. And sometimes the show's not trying to give you that kind of life. We're trying to make a show. Right. <laughs> but um, but uh, in both their cases, I was just like, wow, like work ethic, like professionals, like none of that. Maybe there was some, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Maybe they negotiated some crazy deals or, you know, maybe she only did have gold M&Ms or something in her dressing room. I'll never, <laughs> I mean, I doubt it because she didn't give me that vibe. Right. But, um, she just she came to play, and so did so did Matt. And with him, like anybody who ever gets to work with that dude, better say yes, because uh, mm. um, he was a ray of sunshine. Like just, I can't even describe from a producer point of view. If you had a whole cast of guys like that, you would sing on your way to work every day. Oh wow! Because he was just like, as soon as that nine o'clock or whatever bell, six a.m. whatever the call time was, mm. as soon as that bell rang, you would. You could have blown up his car at 8.59. Mm-hmm. If that bell rang at 9, he was at work. Wow. And like that. He was about that. And in a good way, not in a like, right. you're all at work, damn it. Do what I, you know, he wasn't right. like, he wasn't that dude. He knew everybody's lines, helpful, like just a, a, a ray of light. I could not believe it. Like, and Mary was just like, just chill, like. Almost like you just want to sit down and go to sleep sometimes. Like, it was just like a nice, like, the energy was like, it's, it's okay. The energy was always like, it's okay, baby. And I was like, please don't say it's okay, baby, to me in the middle of my day, because my day is going crazy right now. <laughs> right? I, can't, I can't be sitting down here and going to sleep on the couch. <laughs> right? But, I mean, it was just like, it was yes. great. Uh, I, I, I had, we had to part ways because of um, COVID, so I won't be going back to... Uh, on season two. Okay. But um, uh, I, I feel like I left nothing but friendships over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Courtney were cool at the end. Um, there was a, we, we had to stop production because of COVID and then it just stretched out really long. Yeah. And uh, so we had a long sort of talk about that. Um, and I'm now on the Magnum P.I. show. But Magnum um, P.I. I know another show I grew up with, although it's not obviously Tom Selleck is what seventy five years old. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's on he's on Blue Bloods or whatever. But uh, we're having a good time with that. It's fun. It's an interesting weird life. Man. Uh, but uh, but no, that ghost stuff. Power. <laughs> Let me just tell you this. This is some news I did not know. I mean, I was already a fan, like a lot of people are fans of that show. Mm-hmm. But what a lot of people don't understand is after Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. Power. Yeah. I, I, I saw that one time, the numbers. I was yeah. like, oh, wow. That's how many people are on that show worldwide. Like, power is a legit phenomenon. And the next number down, I remember what the show was, is like way down. It's like way up here, Game of Thrones in power. And then way down here is the <laughs> next biggest show. Like, wow. I'm not kidding. It's that big of a split. Wow. Like, um, Courtney, I call it the Kempire. Mm-hmm. She is 
she's a dynamo, man. That that chick is, she's a writer's writer. Her people are happy working for her, which is not something everybody that successful can say. Uh, um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I go back in a heartbeat. Oh, that's what's like, up. Yeah, she's great. Well, Jeff, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to close out the show. Uh, we gonna have to do a second episode with you, sir. Anytime you want, man. Lot. Anytime you want. We still gotta talk about winter, man. All the, we gotta oh, talk about a lot of stuff. You know what? I tell you what. I'm about to. Well, anyway, we can just do it. But I'm gonna be releasing some Winter Man comics. Um, okay. Later in the year. Oh, cool. Still working on who's gonna be doing that, so we can come back and talk about that if you want. Um, but, or anything else, because Green Lantern's about to drop in April. <laughs> Trust me, we're gonna have to. Yeah, we might have to do a, a series with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's an exclusive Jeff I mean, Thorne cool series. All of it. Wow, you need to stop it. Uh, um, Jeff, yeah, I know you're being on fun. Twitter and everything, so uh, where can people find you and, and, oh, and keep up uh, with your exploits? You can use my name. You can, listen, okay, disclaimer, mm-hmm. don't come to my, uh, don't come to my Twitter feed <laughs> yeah, don't, thinking don't. it's, my, my Twitter feed is R-rated a lot of the time, mm-hmm. there's a lot of politics, and I don't take, I don't suffer fools. No, so, you don't. Um, I, I try to be happy and be reasonable and have a good time. We have fun. There's a lot of music on my yes. on my feed. Um, different shows. I try to hit people with stuff. But I'm a grown ass man, so that's a grown ass man's Twitter feed. Yes, sir. Um, don't come by unless you're ready for that. For real, not like oh, yeah. it's not a threat. I'm just saying it's not going to be all oh, like no. cartoons and you know whatever. But uh, if you want to, uh, you can use <laughs> Jeff Thorne. Yes, that's sir. the at or Thorne under slash identity is the other thing or you can just go to my name I have a website jeffreythorn.com it has a links to everything um, you can do that uh, yeah yeah uh, guys we're going to go ahead and, and wrap the show up and uh, if you um, um, obviously you can always catch me uh, at DKG72 on Twitter and uh, Instagram David Gordon 72 on uh Facebook ah. on the fan page and the TikTok where I just only thing I post I don't dance I just post art ah. I just point, post time lapses of art <laughs> so don't, That's don't look so for dumb. that I don't dance <laughs> I don't What's dance with you? can't oh dance on god. TikTok <laughs> oh my god oh my god uh, guys um, also I do have to I have to give a big shout out to an actress who came through and helped out with a project for me um Uh, Miss Jacqueline Thompson. Uh, yeah, I had a brain fart for a second for that fam. Miss Jacqueline Thompson. Um, I apologize uh, for having a brain fart, but Jacqueline Thompson, thank you so much. Uh, you came through on the Black Black Love Chronicles coloring book commercial, and you knocked it out the park. So guys, um, all of those things will be linked below. Of course, obviously, uh, you support on a uh, Patreon, and uh, this is the Foresight Podcast, and we will talk to you all later. Peace. Peace.